Alicia, what are we covering? Okay, this is like, so we have lots of videos on our channel that yeah. got a lot of traction. traction, lots of views, and but they're a little bit outdated. Yeah. And so what we've, we've done is virtually went back and found all that old content and we're like, let's make it as updated as we can for you guys. This is one of the most viewed videos that we have on our channel, and it is the car decal. Yes. So what we've done, we're going to show you two different ways today, how to waterproof printable vinyl um, and how to just cut like a standard car decal yeah. out of adhesive vinyl. Yeah. So, and I'm going to give you tips on like the best vinyl to use and the best way to waterproof it and stuff like that. I love so, it. yeah. It's going to be really good. It is. The product that you have here on the table, I've actually done. Um, I did Courtney uh, a shampoo, a body wash, and a conditioner oh, bottle. Yeah. And I used this product today from Starcraft. Mm -hmm. So, this has been tested, not only tested, but used for almost a year and a half inside yeah. of my own shower. Yeah. And it's still, it's holding strong. That's so, amazing. yeah, it's awesome. There's a whole like recorded video on the channel. Mm -hmm. um, it's about like waterproofing decals, like three ways or something. Yes. But like Alicia said, the software shifted. There's new design space, um, like restrictions, like taken away, so you can do better, larger print and cut. Yes, big print and cut. Big cuts. print and cut. So yeah. now you can do that on your car. You can do it in so many different ways. Right. Car decals for a lot of people are scary. Yes. So we just want to take that away because you're making a decal. Yeah, it's very easy. Actually, probably one of the easiest Cricut crafts. Yeah. I would argue that, if for not the sure. easiest. I just think. Um, people see them and they think that it's going to be difficult, but right. it's really, if you have the right materials, it's really not. Yes. Now, so. a lot of people like doing big wall decals can be challenging or yeah. doing like hours of operation and like mm -hmm. logos on the car, things like that. That can be daunting, but here's what I want to say to you, because I see a lot of you that are chatting about, oh my gosh, I want to do this for my business. I want to encourage you to do it. And here's what I want to say. As someone that has done door decals, things like that, you want to say yes to the order, okay? Mm -hmm. Do one or two, maybe just for free, to yeah. get comfortable. And here's what I want to offer you. What do you have to lose? So you may say, Dana, right. I'm nervous. Like, what, what if it, what, right. what if it's uh, crooked? What are you going to do? Alicia, what would you do? Take it off and do it again. Do it again. So I want to yeah. offer that to you today, that if you want to add something new to your offering, this would be a really affordable one and you'll perfect your skill. It does not right. take too long to learn how to position door decals. And I think I think what the dilemma for people with the car decals is the application process. Yes. For I think sure. it's making sure it's straight, making sure the surface is clean. Yep. And those are the more daunting that's the more daunting yeah, part of it. 100%. Um but just, you know, it's removable. It's yes. just sticker paper. It's not that serious like yeah. You can take it off and make a new one. It's totally so good. fine. So good. So, so we've had some questions. So the, that's what we want to talk about today. And I've got all of the things here. If we go overhead. So um, I want to show you all how to make just like a basic Cricut decal. Um, this is going to be super, super easy. If you are an experienced Cricuter, you're probably going to be like, that's super easy, but I want to show you all and give you some tips on things that I like to use when we're just doing basic vinyl cut decals. Um, and then my other thing I want to talk about today are print and cut car decals. So you all know if you've been here for any amount of time that we love the Zakoto brand uh, sticker paper. This is the matte, which I think prints the best. It prints better than the glossy, in my opinion. I love this brand. D yeah, Zakoto sticker paper is bomb.com. And the matte. I prefer the matte. I don't know if you have noticed a difference between glossy or matte, but for mm. me, the black, like any, if you have a design with black in it, the matte paper just absorbs the pigment and the ink really well. And so that's why I love this vinyl matte paper. And then this is the star of the show. This is the update. So previously, I don't know that we had used this on the car decal video previously, um, but I want to say that this is going to be the ticket for your print and cut car decals because this is a UV laminate sheet. So these are clear. Let me take one out and I'll show you. This is basically like putting a clear film over your decal. So I'm just going to pull this edge up. Well, maybe if I can get it. So, and it's also like a matte finish, which I am a sucker for a matte finish. So 
this is what is going to go over your sticker. And then I've got a sticker right here. This one has the laminate over top of it. This feels such good quality. This feels like I bought it at like REI. Like it feels like one of those fancy Patagonia stickers. Am I the only one who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, like it, the fancy like water bottle stickers yes, you can buy. Because here's the deal. When you're at REI or, mm -hmm. you know, Nashville, Asheville, wherever you're going, right. you're paying five to six dollars for those stickers. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that a lot a lot of us worry, you know, just to talk about I love teaching people about selling their crafts. Yeah. And I want to offer that, you know, I happily pay five and six dollars. Me too. We're a good sticker. Me too. So Me too. for our friends out here that's like, I can't charge more than a dollar for a sticker. I want to no. offer you that people will happily order from you. Mm -hmm. And the thought you have about your customer is very important. And I want you to yep. monitor your relationship with the identity of your customer. Because you need to think positively around your customer. I agree with you that. You need to know that they want to spend money with you because they love supporting you and getting the result. And I think the sticker, yep. I'm a crafter, I could make that sticker, you're a crafter mm -hmm. and you can make that sticker, but we happily give our funds to get a ready-made sticker right. that we just put on our water bottles and yeah. enjoy. If you can get it in the right place and you've got your right demographic and you're selling, if you have a bicycle shop up the road and you live near the beach, like, this is perfect. You know, I mean, you just find what works for you and like, don't undersell yourself either. So anyways, so I've got all this stuff here. You're going to need some basic Cricut tools. You're, we're going to be using a standard grip mat. I've got a brayer, which I like to use for my print and then cuts. Um, even when I'm not making stickers, brayer is great for print and then cuts so your ink doesn't ever smudge. I've got a burnishing tool, an X-Acto knife, a measuring tape, and then some scissors. And I also like to keep rubbing alcohol around for my application process. So we really like to clean our surfaces really well. These little alcohol pumps are from the Dollar Tree and we just put rubbing alcohol in them and we clean all of our surfaces before we apply vinyl with these. So this is like one of our oldest hacks. I don't know if you want to call it a hack, um, but yeah. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull up design space really quick. And I've already pulled my PNG, so let's just start there. And I want to start from the top. So if you're like, what the heck? I don't how did you get to where we're at now? Let's go ahead and hop over to the Makers Gonna Learn website. And I've already got our new, so these are our newest images that we I think these came out like earlier this week, or maybe at the end of last week. Um, lots of really fun like disc golf files, which my dad and husband and brother-in-law are disc golfers. I love, did you know I love disc golf? Do you? I played a lot before I had kids. Okay. Um, it was the way I, the way I pitch people on it is it's like hiking. Bless <laughs> you. Me, I should have took that allergy medication. I know. Um, <laughs> I, it's like hiking, but you get to be outside longer. Yes. I love it. It's, it's like fun. it's like pepped up hiking. Yeah, it's really fun. So lots of really fun and cute uh, disc golf. We've got Mardi Gras stuff in here. These surf and sand files are like a vibe for me. I really love the colors. And the perk of using PNGs and doing a printable image is that you're gonna get a lot more color opposed to if you're doing a vinyl decal, you can always layer different colored vinyls but if you've got an inkjet printer, you can just print these out and the color is already there. You're not having to fiddle with like layering your vinyls and things like that. So lots of different options. So, okay, so let me just, let's just download this file. I'm just gonna show you all how this works. So if we wanted this file right here, you're gonna go ahead and select the little button. It'll pop down into a zip folder. If for some reason you can't find it, go to your finder or your search bar and type in the name of the file or go to your recent downloads and it should be there. And then you can see right here, it is a PNG. So it'll have the file name .png. And then what you're gonna do, leave it like it is, pull up Cricut and you're gonna go to your uploads. So I selected upload, I'm gonna upload my image and I like to drag and drop my images. So I'm just gonna go back to my finder, go find your file on your computer and you can just drag and drop this into your uploads. Now with PNGs, I always use complex. That's just what I like to use. 
and then you can select apply and continue. If we select cut image, it's just gonna give us the circle. So make sure you select print then cut image and we're gonna go ahead and upload that. And then we can select it and add it to our canvas and voila. Look at you. Everybody's loving these stickers. When did these come out? This, I think this week or last week. It was oh, like the beginning of this I week or last week. I am digging this. I Me mean, too. Ugh. They're so cute. They're so. sticker readies. And remember, if you're a member, you can use these for your business and sell uh, them. Yeah, like, which is amazing. Sure. These will be so cute in a little surf shop. So anyways, that's how you pull an image in. I did the same exact process with this image right here. And I'm going to use this arched image because I just think it's so stinking cute. Um, and then basically when you pull a PNG in, typically they're going to come in flattened. Um, if for some reason you get a PNG from elsewhere, like not from Maker's Gonna Learn, make sure that all of your layers are flattened. Now, if you're using our files, they're going to be flattened because we're just picky like that. Um, but sometimes, so a lot of our PNGs are, well, all of them, they're hand drawn. So Sometimes whenever you pull in PNGs, and I want, I wish I could show you all an example of this. Um, there will be like little tiny, like on this one, uh, let me see if y'all can see this. Sadie, tell me if this is in focus right here. Can you all see this? I just want to show this to you. So can you guys see right here? There's a little cut. Okay. Sometimes on hand-drawn images, mainly because it's like an illustration. It's not like an SVG where there are definite lines. There may be tiny, tiny little gaps. And on this particular PNG, there is. So if you go to cut this out, it will try to cut right there where I showed you all. It'll try to cut just a little nick there and a little nick there. It's just the tiniest. You can't even hardly see it, you guys. But if you want to avoid that, what I like to do before we go to print this is add the smallest offset ever. So I'm just going to add an offset of like 0 0.01. You literally can't even see it. Now, if you're like, you can see, let me zoom in. You can see that there's like a very vague black outline on this. You see that? I'm just going to change the offset color to like orange. So if it does show you, I mean, it's, it matches. And then you want to make sure to flatten your offset with your image. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. And then what we want to do is measure the surface we're putting it on. So I typically do not like my car decals to be bigger than like five to seven inches. You don't want it too small because you can't see it. But you don't want it gigantic unless you are doing something like the Bell Property Management sticker on the back of Tanner's work truck. Yes. Like that one's huge because you're advertising something. Right. But if you're doing like a cute little beach bum bumper sticker, I think a five to seven inch range is like really good. Um, so, and you'll learn like what you prefer and what your customers like the most, but five to seven is a good place to land. Yeah. So this one is five high by 3.7 wide. This That's perfect. So everything is flattened. That's key when you're doing print and cut. And what we're going to do now is select make it. So you don't need to mirror your image or anything like that. We're just going to go ahead and select continue. Now, if you have not been around to do print and cut, thank you, Shirley. She says she likes my shirt. Uh, I've been wearing banties on the live. <laughs> on the lives. It's not <laughs> planned. It's just I just wear these shirts all the time. I did not make this. This is from Walmart men's section, if you didn't know. <laughs> so um, anyways, if you all have not been around recently, like messing with print and cut features, they have updated their print and cut. So it looks different off the bat. We've got these four corners in here. Um, you can see you can pull this all the way up to the top and all the way to the sides, which you could not do before. Um, you can change your material size. Love it. 11 by 17. Look at that. 11 by 17. Now, whoever decides to come out with 11 by 17 sticker paper is going to be rolling in the dough. Uh, we're going to be giving oh. all our money to them. <laughs> we're going to be paying you a lot of money. So, yes. like, if you are a sticker maker, keep your eyes out because I know that people that make products like this, I just guarantee 143 vinyls on top of this. Yeah. I feel like they're probably like, we need to be making 11 by 17 sticker yes. paper. Now, there is sublimation paper. This is great for people who sublimate. 
um, because you before you couldn't make, oh my gosh you couldn't do this it this changes my sublimation game yeah before you would we had like a workaround and we could do it but you couldn't do it nearly as easy before so anyways we're gonna stick with eight and a half by eleven I'm just gonna kind of nestle that in the corner and then we're gonna go ahead and select continue now I need to print this so I'm gonna send to my printer um, I'm gonna keep the bleed on I'm gonna keep the bleed on so the bleed virtually extends the outer color out a little bit so if my calibration isn't exact I know that that color is gonna go all the way to my edge and it's not gonna show any white around my sticker right Typically, I don't leave the bleed on for everything, um, but for this instance, I'm going to. And then I'm also going to use my system dialog, and we're going to select print. If you're using a Mac, your dialog box is not going to pop up. So you need to pull your screen down, and then your dialog box is here. It was just hiding from you. Uh, I think Windows, it just pops up. And then we're going to feed this from the rear tray because sticker paper is a little bit thicker. And if you have a rear tray, it helps it to feed through the printer a lot better and always print best, always print best quality. Okay, that is printing, okay? Now, while it's printing, I wanna show you all what I like to do for this type of sticker in Cricut Design Space. So, before I was cutting it on glitter cardstock, um, but I'm gonna go to Browse All Materials. If you guys have stepped away, I want you to come back. Yes. Um, this is something that can be very helpful to all Cricut users, and a lot of people don't realize they can do this, and that's why I like to share this little hack. Um, so before I was cutting it on glitter cardstock, that is my go-to setting for anything that is super thick that needs multiple passes. So glitter cardstock, if we, if we select that, um, let's see, hold on one second. Let's go to material settings. Okay, so I'm going to go out of here. What you're going to do is browse on materials, Go to Material Settings, and I want you to scroll down to Glitter Cardstock. Where is she? Here we go. Okay, so Glitter Cardstock, it's cutting with a pressure of 270, and you're getting two passes. I want those same settings, but I want to make myself a laminate sticker setting. Like, I, want to, I don't want to click Glitter Cardstock. I make a lot of stickers for cars, so I want to be able to click on Laminate Sticker Setting, and then be able to have like my own setting for this type of sticker. Right. So what I'm going to do is remember those settings. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to add a new material. So let's call this laminate stickers and I've already made one so it may not let me do. It may not let me do. Okay and then I'm going to select save and it's going to pull us up here and look you can see where I made my first one, um, but you can adjust the pressure. So I'm gonna adjust it to 270 because I know this cut setting works. I know this works. And then you can also adjust how many passes it does. I'm gonna do two passes and then you can save it. And now, whenever we go out of this, I can browse all materials and I can type in laminate stickers and y'all, you can name it whatever you want. And there's my cut setting. I'm going to hit done. And this should cut exactly the way that the glitter cardstock cut, except this is like my special setting. And if you find that you need to adjust the, adjust the pressures or anything like that, you can. Um, I, I'm not going to do more pressure on this. It should be enough. 270 is like tipping the bar. Like we're going to the maximum there. So let me go grab the paper. I'll be right back. Yes. So she is getting that all good to go. I mean, look at how easy it is to really print and cut like a lot of people get really nervous about like integrating their printer with their Cricut but I want to encourage you it's a game changer it it's is gonna make your project so good yes so you can see how gorgeous these colors are let me grab our mat really quick so the colors printed so good and I swear it's because we're using this matte UV lamp yeah, or this uh, matte sticker paper it's For so sure. good and so I'm just going to place this on the top left corner. I like to make sure my print and cuts are perfectly lined up. And we're going to roll with our brayer over top of this. The brayer is really good to make sure this is secured down. And then before we cut it, we are going to add our special ingredient. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a sheet of this out. Now, it does not recommend that you try to do a full sheet on here. So we're going to cut out just enough to cover our design. So we're just going to cut this out with some scissors. 
And this does not affect the print and cut feature. Adding this over top of our image, it does not affect right. it at all. I think when I first did this, I was like, ooh, I don't know if it's gonna work. <laughs> and it was totally fine. And you can save these. I yeah. save all of our little yeah, scraps. for sure. So, now this part, this, this is the part where I try to avoid as many bubbles as possible. So I'm gonna flip this over and we're just gonna fold, we're gonna fold like an inch or so back from our backer. Look at you go. So I'm just gonna fold this back just a little bit, okay? So it looks like this. Let me show you close up. So I've just folded this back, okay? What I'm gonna do next is line this up to the top of my sheet of my print then cut, okay? And then keep your burnishing tool on hand. And I'm going to basically, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use my burnishing tool to flatten yes. it as it goes, okay? So you're not gonna be able to see my burnishing tool as we do so it. So if anyone's asking, you know, we're gonna cut at laminate stickers, mm -hmm. but if you're not using the, uh, like what she's applying right now, that laminate protector, you would use just like printable vinyl setting mm -hmm. is my favorite. Um, you could use like for magnet sheets, you're like, oh my gosh, what, what setting? There's a magnet sheet setting, yeah. you know, anything like that. So anyone new here and you are hanging out with us today, I do want to let y'all know it's the last day to save $30 off our Flash 30 promo for President's Day. It was a little extended sale from the holiday, but today's the last day. So it's the last one. It's, it's all, yeah, it's a really good deal for annual membership. If you're ready to go all in on yourself, get a thousand cut falls a month um, and access to our entire library of training, cut falls, fonts, community. Yeah. And we like to talk to you guys like yeah. in the Facebook group, like we for can all be sure. friends, you know? Okay, so I've got, I want y'all to see, I mean, 10 out of 10. I don't Would have, there's no bubbles. Yes. There's none. So, okay, now what we need to do is load this into our Cricut. Okay, just loading this in. And we've already selected our settings in Design Space. And we're just using default pressure, and usually this works for me. Now, if this is your very first time making stickers, don't be scared to adjust your settings because some Cricuts are a little bit different. So the settings that I'm using may not work for your machine and that's normal. Um, just know that's normal and don't get frustrated. Just go back into your material settings and adjust it if you need more pressure or less pressure or whatever you need. And that way you can get a good cut every single time. And then I'm just gonna hit go. And it's gonna read my registration box and then it will cut out my sticker. Um, Look at you go. And this is honestly the best way. I would argue like you get the best of both worlds here. Yeah. I think for a lot of you that want to be really like intentional mm -hmm. um, and making sure you're doing the best, this is the best. Oh, for like, sure. Like the best way that we can, because you know your Makers Learn team is like weighing the pros and cons of mm -hmm. like being overly like protective and like making sure you pr create the the best result right. and like being realistic with like what looks good. Right. This is what's gonna look best. <laughs> I feel like this gives it such a clean finish, like having this laminate. And I wish that y'all could reach through the screen and touch this sticker because it feels so good. I'm not going to remove it yet. That I never remove anything until I make sure that it's cut all the way through. So let's pull this up. This is a sticky standard grip mat. It is. Praise, I love when that happens. Okay. Oh, black butter. Okay, we're going to remove that. Okay. I'm just going to pull this away and look. That is gorgeous. Okay, whenever you pull this off, flip it over. We don't want to be curling our stickers, so we like to go with gravity. We're just going to remove this from the backer. And look, y'all, that's perfect. That's it? That's it. Look at that. That's it. This is Ooh. this is it for print and cut decals. I mean, that's all it takes, y'all. Like that's it. So, and this just looks so good. I just wish y'all could touch it. It just feels really good quality. So, this UV laminate is very. Um, I mean, it's. It even says it'll say on the packaging. It says specially formulated to repel dirt, water, and adhesives. It says this means the use of transfer tape may be difficult or even impossible. So this is covered, like your sticker is covered. 
Um, it does say if your design has small parts that are separated, it may be complicate the application. So right. make sure um, if you are doing decals, um, like with print and cut images, that you are adding an offset if there are lots of tiny details. I would yes. recommend an offset around the entire thing. Yeah, and to make a really easy sticker, you want to have an offset. Like you want your yes. shape to be something similar to like what Alicia did, like squares, yes. rectangles. You like need... an organic shape yeah. that doesn't isn't like super yeah. sharp and like pointy yes. and all of this that. This is okay to put on a car. Yes, it is mm -hmm. okay to put on a car and it is removable. Um, do you need to add an overlay so that it protects past the edge of your sticker. Okay, that's a good question, Melissa. So, you all totally can do that. If you feel the need to add a small, like, offset around this with the, so that the clear goes a little bit bigger than the sticker, I would recommend, like, a .05 offset, but you're going to need to cut your clear laminate separately from your sticker. So you can't cut them at the same time with the offset, if that makes sense. Right. So you would have to cut them at separate separate times, which makes the application process a little bit more tricky. Um, that's why I do it this way. But if you feel like you need to do that, you can. Honestly, I feel like this is going to be pretty foolproof for you guys. Yes. Um, if for some reason you try and it's not, let me know. Let me know. Right. I feel like this is going to work for you, though. It's going to be really, really good. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be really good. So that's it for those. Um, also, I don't recommend putting these directly on your car. I would recommend putting them on your window. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So now that we've got our PNGs out of the way, let's talk about, let's just do like a monogram. I think a monogram is very popular always. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to do a simple monogram decal. And I'm hoping that we've got, let's do a name. Let's Ooh. just, let's do like Sadie. Sadie. Like like Sadie's car. Love you know it. when people put like Sadie on her side and Shane on his side? I did not like know. His and hers. <laughs> yeah. Sadie's not into that, I can tell. Okay, so if someone wanted to do like their name or what, you know, Sadie's car, let's do that. So everyone knows. Sadie just got a new car also. That's very cute. It's very nice. We love nice. it. We love it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pick my font. Now, I do recommend doing something thicker. You don't want to do anything super dainty for this. One, because it's not going to be legible. Um, and two, like, it's going to be, I don't know. You just want to be able to see it when you're driving. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't want anything super thin. So let's just find a good chunky font. Oh, that's cute. Okay, Sadie would never put this on her car, but <laughs> we're going to go because this is a good, chunky font. I feel like this would work just fine. And so, like I was saying earlier, you want to pay attention to the width and the height. Um, right now, we're like almost an inch high, but the width is like 6.3. We could make this, we could just make this a solid 7 in width. I like that size. Okay, we're going to be cutting this in purple vinyl. You don't have to change it to purple, but I like to get a visual. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and hide our old image. And then what you're going to do next is just go to make it. And then, so we've got our little cutout right here. Now, you all can tell if this got any smaller, I don't know how well it would cut on our adhesive vinyl. So adhesive vinyl, it tends to not like smaller, intricate details. It's not as good as with that as HTV typically is. So we're just going to s settle with that. Um, I've got my standard grip mat here, and I, of course, am using StarCraft Permanent Adhesive. This is my favorite adhesive vinyl brand. I will stand beside. Your car decals are going to last longer if you're using high-quality vinyl. Yeah. Your Dollar Tree vinyl car decals now, are not going to last. Here's the minimum, yeah. in my opinion. So there's permanent vinyl, there's removable vinyl, yes. and at, um, not not necessarily StarCraft, but um, our other brand that has the 651s, help me Orca. out. Orca. Orca. Yeah. 651 is the base. Yes. Do not go any lighter mm -hmm. than 651 for a car decal. Yeah. And, a pre and we've previously talked about this. Your, even a permanent vinyl is still removable. Mm -hmm. Like you're still gonna be able to peel it up things like that, especially on glass, right, um, right. on your car windows and things like that. 
So just remember the grade and the, you know, it's the stickiness, the durability, mm -hmm. things like that. That's why I want you to all imagine 651 is like your base. So yes. for StarCraft, StarCraft Permanent, mm -hmm. things like that, that's the same formula. Right. Pretty much. So, um, the, so permanent, the permanent will have like a higher tack than a removable vinyl was, it does. So if you're like noob to looking at vinyls and you're like, what's the difference? What's the yeah. difference? The permanent is going to be better for a car because it's going to stay on longer, but it's not actually permanent. So right. you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not putting it on my car because it's never going to come off. It sure, will. Sure, sure. It will when you want it to, but it won't when you don't want it to. <laughs> so we've got our um, mat here. I'm just going to go ahead and put my vinyl down. And then I've got my burnishing tool. Make sure that is down really well. Okay. And then I'm going to select continue. And we're just going to use the standard vinyl setting. So type in vinyl. Oops. Um, so we've got premium vinyl and I'm going to use a permanent glossy because that's what we're using today. Select done. And then we can go ahead and send this through the Cricut. Okay. I'm going to get my transfer tape ready. Um, so I want to talk about if you're selling decals and the importance of the transfer tape that you use. Mm. Um, I think using a good quality transfer tape is important. Like this is my favorite. Um, would you put, I just want to know your opinion because you prefer the masking transfer tape. Would you put that if you I sold actually, decals? I would not use paper transfer tape for a customer. Yes. And the reason why is I just want it to be the best quality. Now, I have purchased decals mm -hmm. that have a masking paper transfer tape on it. Okay. And it went on great. It went on perfect. Yeah. But for me, I would use this transfer tape, uh, like Cricut transfer tape. Mm -hmm. I like the clear ones. I think the clear ones last, like work you, better. Uh huh. I and think you can for, see. You can see it, and as someone that may not have worked with transfer tape before, you have to remember that. So I want my customer mm -hmm. to utilize the material that's easiest to use, right. even if it costs a little bit more. I agree. I agree. And a lot of times people really like to use the gridded transfer tape, too, because it helps them line it up. So that's something that you can think about. Um, my decal is cut. I'm just making sure that it cut all the way through, and it did. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove this and then we're going to go ahead and cut away the excess because we can use this vinyl another day. Okay. There we go. And then you're just going to want to weed away the excess. I think this cut pretty good. Starcraft vinyl weeds so good. It does. I just love it. The link for printable vinyl you have is for a matte waterproof permanent sticker vinyl. So why would you need another waterproof matte film over top just to make it thicker? So Sabrina, we actually put that laminate over top our matte. We think the matte provides the best print quality. Mm -hmm. And then we think our laminate sheet, and notice how I say I think, like this is an opinion, okay? Right. You could just use the matte paper and just subtract the thought of using the laminate, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to last longer, the best durability, things like that, we take the laminate and put over top of our great print quality. So that less discoloration, um, lasts longer, and that's just, in my opinion, the best way to do it. Yes, I agree. And I think that having that extra layer really extends the life of the sticker. Like, I just feel like it helps a lot in that aspect. Um, so that's why, that's why I recommend doing that. Okay, can y'all see what I'm doing here? Okay, we're just gonna put this on. Normally I would do the taco method, but this is a really long sticker. Yes. So I'm just going to line the bottom. This is a straight edge on the bottom because I cut it with the grid. So I'm gonna line that up with the, near the bottom of the Sadie's car as straight as I humanly can. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And then we're just going to Burnish that down, and then you can remove it. And we're gonna trim this baby up because it's looking a little crazy, okay? And don't peel it up like me. Flip your mat over and then peel it off. I did that wrong. Um, and then what we're gonna do now is just remove all of this excess vinyl. I'm just gonna cut this like so. 
trying to go as straight as possible. And listen, if you start selling decals, a paper cutter, paper trimmer is gonna be your best bud because you can cut it yes. super, super clean. And actually, I feel like, where did I put my scissors at? Oh, you here. just had them. <laughs> I was like, I just had it. I'm just gonna cut with my scissors. I can do it a little bit cleaner that way. Also missed it. What was that font we used for Sadie's car? <laughs> Let's go back. Let's double remember. triple it's check. A new one. It's, it's a new one. Uh, bell bottom. Bell bottom. She's cute. It's a good one. She's I, cute. I really like a thick font, you know, especially for decal and things like that. So yes, me you too. You found it. That is yes. awesome. <gasps> Okay, so I wanted to just show you all how to apply these really fast. Um, this is obviously not a car window, but it's a glass plate. Um, I think it's from the Dollar Tree or something. Um, this is a little bit long, so I'm just going to trim it. We're not actually going to be putting that on Sadie's car. So Megan says, take us to Sadie's car and slap that thing on there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a really cute font. Oh, yes. um, I just don't know if it's Sadie's bag. Oh, now tell us what you're doing here, Alicia. Okay, so what I'm doing, first of all, making sure that it fits, and it does, I, even after, or now that I've trimmed the car off. Um, I've got my alcohol right here, a paper towel, and I'm just going to clean my surface. So you would do this with the window. Yes, you would do this with the window. I mean, make sure your so car good. is clean. We had to do the thumbnail. You guys is my car and it was so dirty. And I was like, say, yeah, I'm going to clean this corner of my window. And so with the thumbnail, it's like one clean corner of my car window. That's awesome. And that's it. The rest of the car was dirty. I love it. <laughs> so I just clean that and you want to make sure that it dries really well and don't touch it again after you cleaned it. And then I feel like I shouldn't be the person to show you guys this because I'm such not a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this. But you want to teach them, teach them how you became a non-perfectionist about it because you, yeah, okay. you know, it, you just get more comfortable the more times you do it. I agree. So I'm an eyeballer. Yes. Um, I mean, oh. I'm trying to tell you guys how I learned how to be an eyeballer, but it's just the way my brain works. Um, but I will say before we apply it, I like to squeegee it down on the front, flip it over, squeegee it down on the back, and then get your window, get up next to your window. We're going to remove the backing very slowly. And then... We're just going to try to find the center. Now, I'm like at an angle, so don't come for me if this is crooked, okay? This is Sadie's plate now. <laughs> and so I just kind of check the upper and the lower distance as well as the left and the right distance here and just adjust accordingly. And you can kind of touch it down right in the middle first, okay? And then we're just gonna lay that down slowly and then you want to burnish it on really well. Now, your customers may not always have a burnishing tool, but I know that they've got a credit card or a debit card they can use. So they can whip that out, and you can even give them instructions for how to apply it if that helps. Um, and then all you're going to do after that is just pull up your transfer slowly. Okay. And voila, Look there you, you go. go. Now I've got my price sticker on the back. Um, <laughs> so there's two things that I also want to talk about. If you are doing holographic vinyl, oh. I want you all to make sure you are using the correct transfer tape. Yes. You cannot use this Caesar transfer tape with holographic vinyl or any of the like sparkly fun vinyl. You need a stronger tack for that. So make sure you know what tack to use for that. Another question that I see is, can I put it on the inside of my car window? Um, your windows are probably tinted so no one's going to see it. And also... The it's, bubbles. It you just, could, I don't know if yeah. you, There's not... This one's actually really not bad. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you'll get bubbles. So if you did do it from the inside, you'd have to mirror it first and then stick it. But it doesn't not the look The readability good. It not and good. everything does not look as good. Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of lose it. So there's that. It, that's you it. it. Yes. All right. So Renee says, if you're making a multi-layer decal, how do you eliminate the tiny bubbles be uh, mm -hmm. between the layers? So let's talk about that. So if I was doing a multi-layer vinyl decal, now, Alicia was so kind to teach two different ways to do a decal. Mm -hmm. Number one, print and cut, and then bada bing bada boom. Number two, you could just cut regular vinyl. Just one layer. Just one layer yeah. and, and provide them the transfer tape to apply it. So if I was going to do a multi-layer decal, 
um, and stack the vinyl layers, mm -hmm. you would provide them with just the transfer tape after you've applied and stuck all the layers. So that's number yes. one I wanted to mention. Number two, when you ask how do you eliminate tiny bubbles between the layers, you would just want to make sure to use that taco method as you're laying down the decals. I have a great tutorial where I teach, it's called how, it's like how to do a multi-layer image. Mm -hmm. And I actually teach you my process of picking them all up. It's building a multi-layer bicycle. Yeah, um, yeah. And you can just like pick each layer up. There's a secret hack and you'll see it all just adheres to the one piece of transfer tape. Right. And I, we actually go over it in the 30 days of Mastery of Cricut. I did a tutorial on it as yes. well, layering two color, two layers. Um, so if you're a member, that's actually in your dashboard under the 30 days of Mastery of Cricut. It's like yes. how to layer vinyl. Um, but same concept. And then if you do find that you're still getting bubbles, my favorite hack is to take a little pin pin tool or like a sewing pin and you can literally stab it. Just a little stab. Yeah. Just a little stab and just kind of like go even over it, it. Yeah. yeah, and it'll even itself out. But For I sure. try not to do that because sometimes you can see it. Yes. Um, but you know, it happens. It's natural with vinyl. So. Yes, I love it. So.